Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Redline News Network. My name is Jet Likings, and welcome back. So you might have been asking, where have we been for the past couple months? Well, we've relocated the studio from the Northeast down to sunny South Florida. During that time, we've upgraded our hardware to be able to shoot in 4K, 60 frames per second, and we are also doing 48 volts of phantom power for our sound as well. You might be asking, where's Vic? Well, we're gonna be splitting up the episodes and doing car news or supercar news with myself, Jet Likings, and then Vic will be following up in different episodes with all your favorite YouTube stuff, including Stradman, Daily Driven Exotics, etc. So again, we're back. This episode is back. We're gonna be premiering every week going forward. The YouTube with Vic will be starting soon, and we'll also be doing some taking it to the street events happening as they're scheduled and as we attend them. So without further ado, Let's take it to Redline. Starting off this week, we're gonna be discussing the wide body 2022 Z06 spy video. Now this premiered from David Wessel's YouTube channel. He's a Corvette blogger who has captured some remarkable footage of five Corvette Z06 prototypes with limited camouflage on them. Now included in the footage was the Z06 being benchmarked against a 991.2 GT2 RS and even a Ferrari 458 Italia. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with the C8 news, these Z06s are slated to arrive with a flat plane V8 instead of the cross plane. You get, to, you get to hear this LT6 engine in the video at around two minutes in the video. I'll include the link in the description. As many don't see the C8 as a supercar, maybe this is one step further into that world as the engine should rev past 8,000 RPM and they'll also have dual overhead cam design, finally ditching that antiquated setup. On to our next story, talking about how a Chinese company is taking a former Ferrari CEO. Now, Silk Fa, the makers of the Hangqi S9, have grabbed ex-Ferrari CEO Amadeo Felicia as a special advisor. Now, the hopes are that Felicia will take his 25 years in experience to set up a global strategy and provide input to the company's business plan. As a reminder, Silk Fa is looking to jump into the luxury and sport car world, not just for China, but for the world. Now, this could be possible. They're pulling in the right people and not just Felicia. But remember, they brought in Walter da Silva, former Volkswagen design chief, who designed the Hainchi S9, which debuted at the 2021 Shanghai Auto Show. It was such a success, da Silva will be in charge of the entire S lineup. The days of making vehicles just for the Chinese government could be over. Now let's talk station wagons. Not just any station wagons, but the 2021 Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. Uh, let's talk about this a little, little bit more because Porsche is calling it a shooting brake. But anyways, I think I love it. Introducing the 2021 Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. Now this isn't exactly new for Porsche as they did have a 928 concept and even a 944 shooting brake, but those really never made it mainstream or lasted. This may change as the EV is slated for release later this summer at a starting point of $92,000. To start, it'll come with two engine options, 469 horse and also 670 horse unit. Later, we hope to see a 562 horse 4S model and even a 750 horse Turbo S. Now this EV will be a bit more utility than the Taycan as it will have a 1.2 inch ride height difference and also a new mode for doing some off-roading, off-roading in your Porsche. Now I've always been a fan of the Audi Avanz and the Mercedes-Benz Estates, but people, I think we have a new attender to the station wagon market. Now let's talk about flipping Ferraris, and I'm not talking about flipping them over, but turning them for profit. Now this isn't really breaking news as it happened a while ago, but many studios are reporting out on it as breaking news, so we're gonna take a second and bring you up to speed. Similar to the Ford GT, Ferrari vets its buyers for its most exclusive cars like the LaFerrari. After being vetted, you enter into a two-year agreement that you won't flip the car, aka sell it for profit. This is primarily to prevent people from turning around and selling at a premium due to the exclusivity of the car. Well, Steve Wynn allegedly did this, while re which resulted in Ferrari pulling out of its dealership group. That's horrible. 
Now over to our headliner, the Ferrari 812 Competition and Competition A have been revealed. Now Ferrari has finally revealed their latest front engine V12, the 812 Competition and Competition A, which is a Targa version. Ferrari has added 30 horsepower over previous generations, pumping out 830 horse and 510 pound feet, redlining at, at 95 100 RPM. If my calculations are correct, this is the highest revving Ferrari road car ever released. All this has been married to a seven speed gearbox that Ferrari states reduces shift times by 5%. Now the Competition A will have a removable target top made completely of carbon fiber. One of the coolest performance mods to date though on this vehicle is it'll come with four wheel steering. Before we switch gears, let's stick with the 812 for another second, as a YouTuber has allegedly caught the 812 almost crashing while trying to run away from them. Now, the clip of an 812 prototype appeared on the YouTube channel Varix, uh, titled Ferrari 812 GTO VS Competition almost crashes while trying to run away from me. Now, the video starts with what looks like an 812 prototype in typical zebra camo, handing over some papers to what looks like a port agent or a police officer at a gate. Now, the 812 doesn't really yield and enters into a roundabout after all that and came pretty close to hitting an out a3. Call it what you want, but this is a little clickbaity. Hey, we do the same thing. All is good, but this is far from a crash and more just like an aggressive driver driving an 812 uh, Competition for the first time. What do you think happened? Comment below. Link to the video is in our description. Now, before we wrap up, we're going to touch on our last story, which is Tesla. Now, Tesla has been doing some pivoting to be able to continue pumping out new electronic vehicles. It's been increasingly difficult for manufacturers to get their hands on microchips. Some of this is driven by the pandemic, but Intel is forced, forecasting that this could last for several more years. It's so tough for companies like Ford to get these microchips that they're actually stopping assembly or even building around the microchips and stockpiling almost complete vehicles until the chips arrive. Now, obviously, Tesla Teslas have a chip or two inside them, which made them quickly pivot to developing new firmware to work with chips from other suppliers. Now this should help Tesla initially, but what happens when other manufacturers, not just automotive, catch on to this? Until then, way to keep proactive, Tesla. Well, that takes us to about Redline this week, folks. We appreciate you coming back for this week's episode. Appreciate you coming back after our 45-day hiatus. Now, subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss out. If you like what you see, smash that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram to keep up with the updates and also check out sweet pics of supercars that we take out in the wild. Until next time, keep it at Redline. Redline.